recently had a customer ask me, why doesn't NAV or Business Central use a 13th accounting period for adjusting entries? So I thought I'd record this quick video today to explain it. I've put together a simple example to illustrate how special accounting features work with the year end close and 12 fiscal periods. So let's go take a look at a couple things really quick. I want to show you what we have in our retained earnings account today. If I click into my retained earnings, I can see I only have an opening entry for 2018. This particular company hasn't had a lot of activity. We're going to do a close of 2019 to illustrate my point here. If I look in this particular account for advertising expense, I've posted a couple of things here that you can see the example. Now, these are three transactions. This line is journal entry. This line is a sales invoice, and this line is a purchase invoice. They've all been posted into this account, so you can see the effect of what happens when the closing entry for 2019 is done. And then again, when we do subsequent entries after the close for 2019, how those look different. So let's go take a look at our accounting periods so that you can see what we have going on in there. So here are the accounting periods, and you can see that we've got 2018 is closed, 2019 is open, and we are now going to accomplish the close for 2019. So in order to do that, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to close the year. This is going to confirm that I want to close for 2019, so I'll say yes. And you'll see that all my little check boxes are now checked. I now need to go close the income statement. So let's go do that. This is a separate action, and it's going to ask me when I want to close the year, where I want to put the journal, uh, what document number I want to use, and then what my retained earnings account will be. And, uh, it'll ask me to do a description. So I'm going to leave all of this as it is and say OK. This is only going to create a journal that I can review, so let's go take a look at that now. And if I look in my year-end uh, entry here, I can see the entries that is created. Now, look at the posting date because this is a closing entry where this is going to ro roll this to retained earnings. You can see that it now puts a C in front of the date. Otherwise, it's rolled everything else up account by account. And then ultimately, my retained earnings account is at the end here. So I'll go ahead and post this. Once this is posted, we'll go take a look at our retained earnings account and the advertising account so we can see the effects on those. And at this point, all we've done is we've closed the 2019 year. We haven't posted any subsequent entries yet. So if I look in the retained earnings account, now I can see that I've got a new entry that has a posting date of C1231-2019 and a source code, this is important, of close income. So this is the net total of my role of the income statement to retained earnings. And it's got a couple special things, the source code of close income and the posting date with a C in front of it. If I go look at the advertising expense account, I'm also going to see that I have this new entry here. This is the other side of the entry. I still have a couple of clues here as far as the source code and the posting date, taking the balance of my account for 2019 and rolling it up to retained earnings. So now I could go forward with things as normal and record my new transactions in 2020. What happens if I discover that I do have some adjusting entries? Maybe I've evaluated some accounts. Maybe my auditors have given me a couple of adjusting entries. Maybe I've discovered a sale that really needed to be posted into that prior year. I've set up a journal entry, a sales invoice, and a purchase invoice. We can post those now into 2019, even though we've already closed it, so you can see what those look like when we walk through a subsequent close. Go do the journal entry first. So I should have this set up in here and oh, I'm going to need to advance my document number there. So I'm just posting a, a little bit to advertising expense here. So I'll post this entry and you'll notice this is for 12 31 2019. So I'm posting this into the closed year and then I'll also go look at my sales invoice where I have one set up already for us. This invoice is also set for 12-31-2019. I've got the posting date and the document date. I could have a different document date if I wanted to, but this posting date is important. That's when it's going to commit it to my financial statements. So again, posting that to advertising expense. 
and then I'll go post my purchase invoice. Here's my purchase invoice again set for 12 31 2019 and my advertising expense so I'll post that through. So I've now posted three subsequent entries to that advertising expense account and I have not yet done a roll of the year. So I've done the initial but I haven't done a subsequent one. Let's go take a look at the retained earnings account first. So right now I should have no change in my retained earnings account. I only have my original closing entry. If I look in my advertising account, I will have accumulated some new expenses in here that have 2019 dates. These three. So those are my brand new ones and my close income only designates balance of the three prior ones. So I need to do another entry to be able to roll those up. Let's get out of here. Now I don't need to close my year again, I just have to run the close income statement routine. So I'll do that again. So I'm going to leave my date at 2019. This is going to put this into my year end batch with a new document number. So if I say OK, it will have successfully created my journals. I'll need to go look at those and review and post. So here are my new journals. It's just taken the balance from that advertising account and retained earnings. Now, I haven't picked up anything else because there wasn't anything else. I had only those three transactions that are posted through there. So let's post this new year-end entry. I'll say yes and OK. And if I go back to my chart of accounts and look at the retained earnings account, I'll see that I have a new close income batch. So this is my second batch that picked up only what was in that advertising account. If I had anything else in other accounts, it would have also picked those up, aggregated them, and closed them as well. If I scroll down into my advertising expense account, I'll see that I now have my additional close income statement entry posted here so I can easily identify that a second close was accomplished. If you'd like a way to see which entries were related to prior year entries, I'll show you a quick tip for that. I'm going to open my GL register report. And with this GL register report, I'm going to filter it. We'll just do it for the whole year. Let's add a filter for prior year entry. We'll say yes. And if I choose Preview, I'll be able to see a quick report of any entry that was considered a prior year entry. And those should be those last three I used in my example with the journal entry, the sales invoice, and the purchase invoice. Hopefully this answers your question about exactly why NAV and Business Central don't need to use a 13th accounting period.